Four-time premiership player. One is captain. Probably the most loved bloke in football, Das. He might go past Richo as the most. I think he does. Yeah. And he's got a book out called All In. We've already talked about it in the show. Get your hands on it if you can still get a copy because they are uh, the number two book in Australia at the moment. Number two. Behind. Number two behind Yumi Steins, apparently. Released a sex book right at the wrong time. Yeah. Though, Howie. <laughs> right. Uh, Knocked him off, but he's a star, and we're pumped he's in the box. Joel Selwood joins us. G'day, Sel. How are you? No, thank you, boys. Thanks for having me on. Hey, mate. Uh, we just uh, played that brilliant call of the commentary when you kicked the goal. We we're actually sitting in this box. Chief was where Damo is. Two Man is where you are, Nathan. And I, I was talking about it the other day with Joel. We were all smiling in the box when he kicked that goal. What was the moment like for you, mate? Oh, I mean, so special even to be back at this ground again and think about it all, how it all played out. Like I took a bit of a punt um, and it's not something that I usually do. I'm playing on Isaac Heaney, um, but 70 points up and uh, it was a little bit of my moment. It was, um, I sat on the bench for sort of 10 minutes before that and I came on for my last run and uh, my gallop and it was just a part of the story and the gods were looking down on me, I think. How far out were you? Like 65? <laughs> yeah, well, it gets, uh, I'm, I'm not quite there, but it's getting pushed out further and further. I think I was only about 35, <laughs> but... Uh, I mean, so sweet. I, I, I've told the story a few times, but Kenny Hinckley didn't usually, usually let me inside the 50. So uh, to sneak in there and to get one on my last dance, it was nice. And Joel just brought smiles to all of our faces. It did. We were see, all smiling Yeah, generally box. because of the love and respect you've got within the footy community to, to see that day unfold. And it was the perfect day from the start and running out with Gaz's little boy and to have that beautiful image of you afterwards taking on the, the, the water boy is it true? There's a story I heard in the wash-up that you got a lift home from the pub with someone. Can you tell us that story? Is it true? You walked out and the girl had no idea who you were. Well, that's true. I uh, So we finished up celebrations back in Geelong that night and it was probably about 1.30 by the time that I'd hit APCO uh, in Barwon Heads and uh, it's a little bit like a boom gate, as Howie would have mentioned. If you go into Barwon Heads, you have to pass APCO and... Um, I called in there. I was going to pick up a few dim sims, believe it or not, on <laughs> on the way home from a grand final. But I actually had left my car key in Harry Taylor's pocket. So um, I was in gear. And when I put it into park, the car wouldn't start back up again. So I was in a little bit of trouble. I couldn't get it back to gear, sorry. So um, the next car that came in was a young P-plater. She'd been working at the pub all day. And I sort of didn't give her any opportunity but to drive me home. Uh, so the poor girl, I jumped in her car and uh, I basically asked her how her day was. And uh, she she wasn't too happy. Not only was she driving back into Geelong, but uh, that she, you know, been working at the pub all day and big Geelong crew and supporters. So, um, and then she went on to ask me how my day was. And I said, probably had one of the best days of my life, to be honest. And, uh, and she had no like idea that day. I was dressed in full cat's gear, head to toe at that time. And uh, it was, a, to be honest, it was such a good leveller in life. Like if I ever wanted to get ahead of myself, it was there and then. And uh, I just wasn't allowed to. And you pulled it. the cup out of the bag. Yeah, I did. Sorry. With yeah. Yep. So I went back, grabbed the key. I said, Emily, hang around, drive me back. I said, you better make sure that... Uh, you know, th take this, this is all legit. I've got the cup in the car, so let's take the photo. The security camera's up there at the petrol station, so everything's legit. <laughs> You're on the book tour at the moment. Tell us about it. How many states are you travelling to? How many things have you done? And how many books have you sold? Many. Well, I've hit... Um, I hit up Tasmania last weekend uh, on Sunday, and then um, we went over to Perth on Wednesday. Was supposed to pop back through Adelaide, but... Uh, not sure what Virgin were doing on uh, Thursday morning, but they didn't want to send us back. So we came back home. I'll make my way back to Adelaide at some stage. Um, but it's been busy. Um, you know, I didn't know really what was involved in it, Brownie, when I signed up. But uh, it's been really enjoyable. The book was great to write from a closure point of view, but also to reflect back. And I, I just didn't do it much in my career. I was always sort of moving forward or thinking about what's next. So... Uh, it's been nice to do and nice to think about the people that I worked with along the way too. You haven't eased into a, a first year out of footy easily, have you? It's, it's been a, a jam-packed one. Storm involvement, Melbourne yep. Storm. You've uh, obviously been seen and helped Australia plan to prepare to, to <laughs> retain the Ashes, a two-all scoreline, yep. Tour de France. Cool. And then we see during the week you're about to embark upon a TV career. Well, a little bit of everything. And that... Uh, Probably didn't mean for it to plan out like this, the way that it was. But I have been living life in a little bubble down in Geelong for 16 years. So a part of the journey, and I've been quite lucky that I've mixed with a lot of good people, but probably not outside of Geelong. So it's more about sort of touching base with a lot of people this year. Um, footy's helped me in many ways, you know, um, 
financially in a, a safe position at the moment. It's not going to last forever, but um, to find out more about what's going on in the world. And if I probably just nailed that down to one position at a club or a, you know a job somewhere, I may not have been able to experience everything. And a big part of um, this year too was a holiday. You know, make sure that I freshen up and get a big sort of eight week break in there and um, freshen up for what's next. Is it possible that football coaching will become a, a prominent part of what lies ahead? Maybe. I, like, I got, I've got no idea just yet, to be honest. And, and that might sound a little bit blind to everything that's going on. But um, I don't think it's just yet. Like, I'm not missing the game um, enough to, to be all in, like the book says. You know, when I do something, I'm going to be um, all over it and put everything into it. And um, it's just not right now. We are speaking to Joel Selwood on the Friday. How do we get your hands on his book, All In? He's all in on uh, being a father, Joel. Tell us about hey. that. How old's the young fella? Yeah, we've got little Joey. So he's five months in. Um Enjoyed being overseas. He made his first trip to Ocean Grove only on Sunday. Um, so he's, he's, he's hit the Alps and everything overseas first. Uh, but he's going well. Um, learning what his cot's about now. Um, sleeping pattern's not too bad. Um, a little bit testing, but he, he was, a, to be honest, uh, it was a great time to go away with him. Didn't have teeth and uh, couldn't move far. <laughs> and that's the most, uh, well, it's the greatest achievement of... Of your life, I'd imagine? Yeah, well, it is. Um, it's been a journey. Um, uh, so Britt and I, we, we had a bit of a struggle with um, falling pregnant. Well, Britt had <laughs> trouble falling pregnant. Um, fertility issues, not only on her behalf, but my behalf too. Like, um, you know, I had a low sperm count. Um, you know, we always probably think that that's a sort of a, a woman's problem, but uh, it wasn't, you know, it had a bit of both of us in there. So, um we, we were just around the corner. I spent uh, many mornings over the last couple of years in East Melbourne at uh, Number One Fertility. Um, you know, the the footy club knew about it, but they didn't need to know about it much of it. I just at times would say that I'm not going to be in this morning. And I, I worked in a, a footy club that allowed it and uh, didn't need to ask too many questions. They just said, we're here when you need support. And I was really grateful for that. And, um, and now we're on the other side. And we, we tell the story through the book because um, we hope we give hope to others uh, more than anything else. And if we didn't tell the story in the book, it probably would have only told half the story of what the last couple of years have been like. A pretty stressful thing, I imagine, Joel, as a couple to be going through that. It's a challenge a lot of couples face, but that would have had its moments, I'm sure. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, it did. Um, but just the emotion of it too. And, and I was lucky. I had a, a wife that was... Um, absolutely killer she just uh, knocked everything out of the park you know her diligence and attention to detail on what she needed to do and when she needed to do it like I thought I had a football clock but the IVF clock is just the next level thing too like you need to do everything to the minute and um, she did that and we just weren't getting any luck you know this was uh, eight transfers 11 cycles um, over a two-year period like um, you have to be pretty tough yeah. you played with some great players not Many of them have gone into the media, like you're going into the media. There's been a lot going to coaching. So I'm going to play some audio of one of your teammates that has gone into the media, okay. just so you don't do what he's done. <laughs> and Scotty, uh, how's Harry Mackay um, sort of handled the criticism that's been uh, come his way during the week? <laughs> criticism. Oh, I'm the Collingwood coach. <laughs> <laughs> If you go into the other room and find out for us, that'd be great. That's a great mate, Stevie J, asking your brother about Harry Mackay and he doesn't coach Carlton. Well, he was always quite hard to handle, Stevie, <laughs> at the best of times, but uh, it doesn't surprise me a slip up like that. Um, geez, his preparation would have been uh, very thorough, I would have thought, before the uh, before he came in that day, but... Um, He's made me. He's he's given me plenty of giggles along the way, and I'm sure he's giving you plenty of giggles up here. Yes. What's the new TV show, mate? We we heard it was I heard it was you, Trent Cochin, and Das. So I was pumping Das up at the start right. of the show until we realised that Das had got shifted aside <laughs> for, J, for, for JB. Much. Were you involved in who was Selection? going to host the show? <laughs> yeah. right. It would have been in my yeah. corner, Joel. If well, you had him. Yeah. I know yeah. were you we involved were. at that yeah. point, mate? No, I wasn't. I I got the call when I was overseas um, that. Uh, there might be something happen. And I actually didn't even get told that there was another player at that time because right. uh, obviously Trent was playing of away course. and probably wanted to uh, keep it a bit secretive. But, um, you know, he still may be playing finals uh, coming up this year. So um, I didn't have much input on it. Um, we, what, we're going to have a meeting coming up. So I can't give away too help, much like. at the moment. And I don't want to give away too much. It'll be hey, a great hey, watch. Are you going to be outspoken? <laughs> comedy skits? Is it hard hitting? I'm, I'm is pretty, it I'm, Well, I'm pretty stiff. Um, <laughs> I can't speak on the other two that are going to host it. But, uh, 
Yeah, I, I mean, we're probably just going to take you inside of what happens behind the scenes. Come first final week, um, what are we thinking? Um, how are we feeling? What's going on? You know, I think Channel scene, 7 so. have seen the Geelong travel ads. Yeah. That's what they're not <laughs> going there. more of that Howie, goal. look <laughs> after me. <laughs> Competition with best on ground, maybe, Howie. Well, it, it might be the Geelong. We asked Howie, your brother about after me. We asked your brother about the Geelong travel ads. Yeah, It'd be okay. remiss of me not to ask. Bowen Heads Cricket Club have heard that you played some junior cricket and they said, I cannot speak to you again without asking whether you have made a full commitment <laughs> nah. to the club this summer. A couple of games. D-grade, what are you thinking? Look at those mitts. Yeah, the <laughs> so you get them on the course. cameras too. <laughs> They're, they're, they're real wiki keeper mitts. It's um, it's, it's one sport that I actually didn't take up. I played once. Uh, I slogged it around, but I think we we're playing uh, the bottom side at that stage. So I had a good innings, but um, I'm sure my Bendigo boys who are tuning in will be laughing away because they think that I tell this story way too much and maybe prepped you up, Howie, to get that one out. Right, oh, uh, you've got your little game you like. Well, to we play do. Here, so don't? every person that comes in here, we ask them to name that voice. So these are all voices from the draft here in the class of 2006. So Here's the first one. Uh, yeah, we had a great night at the Brownlow on Monday. Um, played a few games and enjoyed ourselves. And, um, yeah, it was <laughs> good to see Paddy get it done as, as everyone expected. I'll say Bryce Gibbs. Absolutely oh, right. One from so one, one, one good start. Right, right. So he's number two. Yeah, so they had their granny yesterday and, um, yeah, got done by a point. So um, it's been a pretty rough end of the year for our, uh, our boys, but uh, we'll be back bigger and better next year. That's Travis Spoke. Oh, good one. Almost good became a cat to at one point. How many you got there? Uh, we got six. If you get all six, there's a special big prize. Oh, is there? So yep. Big Jeez. prize. How we yeah. game sticker. Game sticker. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. He's number three. It was contraband when Dimmer was coaching. Um, <laughs> and as soon as he got the uh, lemonade and sass, or he decided to leave, <laughs> I put the order into Puma. So um, it's come through. Ah, uh, that's Jack. Yes, so it's three from three. I reckon this is the one. Okay. I think you'll get the other two. I think this is the toughest one. I can tell when I walked into the the, uh, the reception downstairs that I I landed somewhere pretty special. I'm going to go with Shane Edwards. Oh, no, Josh Kennedy. Oh. Josh Kennedy. There you go. The audio was a bit dodgy. It was audio. Yeah, a bit yeah, scratchy. Wasn't it? It like no five G. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Here's the next one. Really clearly focused on on playing into 2024. Um, so um, yeah, look that that's um, that that'll be hopefully done. <laughs> so I can pick it up from his voice, but I pick it up from the ramble that he goes up. <laughs> there. So that's the tomahawk. That one. I just wanted to ask someone from the Cats. Johnson and Johnson is a sponsor. He wears that much baby oil on. He who puts it on? No, so you'll see. Um, so it'll be uh, looks Paige out there. So Paige is. Uh, What's she doing? She's sort of head of um, like all the gear and property steward. So she just gives him a bit of a wipe just after the uh, circle that the boys go at <laughs> the glistens, end. He glistens, doesn't he? It glistens and it's to basically just make sure they they stay off him. Uh, <laughs> so not, is, not for the head high tackles, believe it or not. Here's the last one. Very few that get that opportunity, uh, especially amongst so many great players that have had far greater success than me um, to be able to have the opportunity is, is an honour. I'll go with Bash or yes. Boys. Oh, Bash oh, five out of six was good. good. Yeah, five there out of go. six. Hey, mate, great to see you. Cats get the job done tonight? Well, I think so. Like, they're going to have to do it differently. And, you know, they're sitting in ninth at the moment. It's that one on the line. But uh, if they win from here on, they're going to go in in good form come a few weeks' time. So I'm the optimism, uh, optimistic uh, thought here. And I just hope that they, uh, they put their best foot forward. They need to start well. Do you um, get a motive when you watch a Geelong game tonight? Actually, I actually not too bad. I'm actually a pretty good watcher, but I do feel the eyes and uh, coming <laughs> towards me, especially when we're down at Fremantle uh, a couple of weeks ago when I could feel like the, uh, the boys were doing it tough. Yeah. And uh, it, it just reminds you how hard the game is. Um, you know, they try their asses off every week and, um, and it doesn't get easier. Well, uh, what's it like going to the footy? For you and your beautiful wife and your family to see your two sons out there playing in the jumper you played for. Oh, look, it's uh, it's huge. Doesn't matter what your kids are doing. I always say you get to see a finished product. So we get to see all the work they put in. So whether it be football, VCE, ballet, you know, you you, you and and they're doing something they love. Um, we're just over the moon. So and it just happens that they're um, you know my background being footy um, uh, just makes it. Uh, it takes us to another level again. So, yeah, no, it's uh, really pleasing.
Very we, pleasing. We forget about the beautiful Colleen's influence uh, yes. too. Oh, yeah. who, uh, has done an unbelievable job in that sense. Hey, uh, Dake, so I think it'd be interesting for a lot of people who were at junior footy and I saw a bit of uh, Nick and, and Josh. You were, you were quite conservative as a dad with the boys, weren't you? You didn't want them overplaying. We see a lot of kids get a lot of overuse injuries these days. Is that a fair reflection that you tried to just hold them back a bit and not make sure they were out there getting banged up too early? Is that right? Yeah, well, I, I, I did hold them back. And, um, uh, I, look, uh, sending them off to... Um, and I don't begrudge anyone sending a kid off into uh, the, the better squads and um, a higher level, but... You know, with that comes, um, you know, you're playing against the better tacklers and it's a lot quicker. And, you know, I really did want them to sort of just uh, hone their craft a little bit and polish up. And um, as I kept saying to them every time they got invited, look, maybe next year they'll be a better player when they're 15 than they are 14 and 16 when they are 15 and so on. So I don't know whether that's right or wrong. But one of the things that I didn't want to happen also is I didn't want their report card marked early. Because, you know, that stays with you. And at the end of the day, that point I make about being a better player year on, two years on, three years on, um, you know, you, you, you tend to keep a lot of that reporting. You know, that gets passed on to the next coach and the next coach. And all of a sudden you get lambasted as probably not working hard or probably not good in the air. And let's face it, I mean, you know, there's a starting point. But more importantly, you um, Improvement comes over years. So, yeah, no, I held back uh, for that reason too. I just, uh, you know, I just wanted to make sure that their report card wasn't marked too early. You see a lot of young kids lose their confidence, Dave, don't you, at the middle age because the kid grows earlier and you've got a 15-year-old mm. who's 100 kilos and a young lad that's having to fight out of his weight division. So as an I've seen some kids not recover from uh, that at times. So I was fascinated watching oh, how... On that, I've got a question about parenting for you. As, as Dar said, you and Colleen, and I think we've, we've all got kids. Damo's kids are a little bit older. Dar's has got a range, and mine and Nate's kids are starting to play sport now. How did you judge the wanting to help your kids and your level of experience and knowledge and passing it to them and pushing them at all? Or did you step back? or did you, like what, what medium did you find to help your kids but not overarch the whole situation? Well, I didn't have to work too hard. The one thing I always did, and I say to uh, dads, it's say, you know, you know, they ask me, you know, what should I be doing? Mm -hmm. Take them to a game of footy because you know what they do when they first come home? They, they want to kick a ball, you know. You know, the, oh, let's have a kick, Dad. And then the first thing in the morning, let's have a kick. Watch a replay. Um, first thing in the morning, but you learn to love the game by going to a game, and then that sort of flows into things. So um, we went to games, and we went to games all the time. So they weren't necessarily Collingwood Collingwood games, and a lot of the times I, you know, my 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 slant on it is learning to play the game when you haven't got it. So I was more interested in being at a game and saying, well, just watch what. Nathan Brown does off the ball and what he does after he gives the ball on and and kids tend to mimic so you know they subconsciously as they're watching and and may not be talking about it they're subconsciously learning and that's that's a real um that's really important and we're sitting here with the great Peter Dacos one of the all-time great players and as we're sitting here Dakes we're watching several replays of Nick get his uh, knee injury and crashed into um, Banks, the Hawthorne defender. How do you go, Dax, as a dad and you, and you watch that? Do you find that hard? I mean, clearly you do, but uh, the getting injured part? Well, I haven't watched the game. I, I, I basically scrubbed it off the TV. I wasn't interested. I wasn't happy about the incident, to be quite honest. Um, and, and looking at the incident, Nick had come off about a 20-metre run and got stopped dead in his track. So the kid from Hawthorne hit him pretty hard and, and didn't try and fend off or try and miss him. I mean, he, he was clearly in it to, to run into him and um, I was a bit disappointed about it. Do, and, do you uh, feel so that should have been dealt with by the AFL? Oh, for sure. Well, I, I, I was disappointed because I, I feel he hasn't been... I, I think, you know, he hasn't been looked after at, at, at times. He, he gets a hell of a lot of attention. I think the, the four umpire rule is, is just... It's the worst thing we've ever introduced into the game. Um, interpretations are just poor. I mean, you've got an umpire 60 metres off the ball giving a decision that the, the guy 15 metres away couldn't give. So the interpretations are completely all over the shop. So that one didn't even... Um, Nick didn't get a 50 metre penalty. Nick had marked it, mm. took two strides, and the guy hit him. So, you know, that should have been a, a 50 down the field. Or, or at least the guy should have made an attempt to try and fend or whatever. So having said that, then there was an incident... 
down here on the boundary earlier in the game where he got slung and thrown and nothing happened there. And I think the um, same happened to Brody Mychek, kicking it down the field, got... got um, you know, he ended up on his backside and then the ball came back for some reason. You know, it was a free, so they brought the ball back. But but I would rather have the ball five metres around from the behind post and have players pushing in, you know, closer to goal. But having said that, yeah, I, I don't think it's worked. So I, I was disappointed. Of course I'd be disappointed yeah. because um, really the, the, um, the end result hasn't been a good one. And just, on, just to back over that, do you feel he should have been dealt with by the match review office? Oh, no, I'm not going to go that far uh, with it. No, I just think, I just feel that, you know, the, the, the game's about protecting the players, you know, and, um, and, and I was just a little bit disappointed that, um, yeah, with that, uh, I thought all he had was a corky, but, I, but at the time I thought that was a 50-metre penalty. That wasn't sort of given. But having said that, yeah, I, I feel that we're been a little bit all over the shop with mm. with the umpiring and, and the inconsistencies of it and and look it's a hard job don't don't worry I mean making a split second we get the the video views and we get uh, a split second to be able to gather our thoughts but but when you have four running out there I mean it, it's just all over the shop Peter you um, obviously have instilled in your two boys your football ability your football now so you've also instilled in them the the, the need to be a good person and, and you're always that way yourself when you were playing, you always had time for people, time for media, time for people who come up to you. It's an important part of what they have now become, isn't it, in your eyes? Well, that to me is more important than the football. The football is a byproduct of them, really, and an extension of them. So, you know, the, the one thing I've always said is uh, I've said to the boys, I don't want to see a photo that, you, you know, I'll be able to tell that you don't want to be in it. You know, if, if someone, I think it's, a, it, it's the greatest. Um, thing you could bestow someone, someone wanting a photo with you, because you know what's going to... That photo ends up on the fridge or gets shown to someone or, you know, it's there forever. So, and I, and I say to the boys, I know you're going to have your moments where you, they get the wrong angle or you're just not having a great day or moment or whatever. Um, you know, so... But they're, they're, they're good and they do give a, a, a little bit of the time. And I, I'm flattered. I mean, I haven't played the game for 30 years, but, you know, someone still you know, um, wants a time to have a bit of a chat or, or, or talk footy, that's great. And footy's, um, you know, has been sensational for me. I you mean, ain't getting out of this box till we get a photo with you, I can assure <laughs> you that right now. Oh, we've had a few, Howie. We have. Jeez, well. we have. As Damo said, you should be very proud of them. Every time they speak to anybody, everybody always speaks about how good the Dacos boys, they talk about you by name, so they'll come up and they'll say, oh, g'day, Mark, or g'day, Luke. And they even spoke about Stevie Johnson. They knew Stevie Johnson's uh, little son's name, Archie, a couple mm. of weeks ago. So he was chuffed about that. You're a Collingwood family. You're a Collingwood legend. They've now signed long-term Collingwood deals. Was there ever a time, what was your best offer to leave Collingwood? <laughs> oh, gee. Oh, look, it was, I think it's well known uh, back in 82. So uh, it was Richmond and um, I think I'd just signed for 35 and I got off at 120 a year, so, <laughs> oh, um, which was, which was a, a fair bit of money. But uh, again, but, th but like, then... What, what kept you there? Uh, my, my father just wanted me to stay there. So my dad said, you know, you're Collingwood and people know you as Collingwood and... Um, and yeah, it's sort of, and, and again, if you oh. then go to, and, and it was. That was the middle uh, of the Collingwood Richmond Wars. Wasn't yes, it, exactly. Yeah. Yes. And so, so probably that came into play as well. But then, and then you sort of fast forward that. And I think within three years, Richmond were in trouble. So all those players that had been offered the big money to go there weren't paid anyway or, 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 the boys or fell well been short. playing for Richmond. Pardon? The boys could have been playing for <laughs> Richmond. Imagine the yeah, repercussions no. if you'd made oh, that move day. But well, I don't think it was ever, ever, um, yeah, ever considered really. Right. I mean, I, I was flattered and I thought, wow, you know. But my, my heart was pretty well set with Collingwood. So you know, um, and, and look in hindsight now, you know, it's 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 you know, I've probably done better outside football than I did inside football. Although it's relative to your times, we were still doing quite well for the times. You did, know? You, did you say that to the boys when they were going through the negotiations about the importance of being a Collingwood person? Uh, no, I, I spoke about leaving something on the table because it's important that, right. you know, um, that the club's able to bring players in. They're going to make you a better player. They're going to make the team a better player. And so, um, and they, but they were already, and, and we, we hadn't spoken about 
you know, what you should get. You know, we spoke about um, a, a fair contract and Robbie, um, Robbie DeRazio and, and Paul Connors did a terrific job and, and look, all parties are happy and that, that's really important. So, you know, it allows Collingwood now to move forward and be able to bring other players in and um, continue to build the team and, you know, for the benefit of, of the players out there or the squad and then more importantly, um, the team collectively and the club. And I love the long-term do deal too, Howie. Yes. If you're a young kid growing up, you get to know that you can grab the Dacos boys and put their number on your back and uh, for the next, uh, you know, seven or eight years, they're going Dakes, to be locked in. But maybe Dakes should have been around when Nathan was wavering and left your Bulldogs. Maybe. <laughs> well, I'd like to have rolled him out. And I tried my best to just say, Nate, don't. You have to bring <laughs> that up for <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> It's just a relevant <laughs> topic. You I asked the thought. question about him, Lee. <laughs> you, you did. So, mate, I, we, I wanted him a calling for this guy. He was a gun. We you know, need, he could play all over the shop. We need to let you go, but... Like we see those great shots of you in the telly, and it makes us smile. How do you, how do you go in a tight game? Are you watching the game? Are you watching your boys? You love the club. Like how do you go watching a tight game? And and hopefully you'll get to watch the boys in some big finals very very soon. Um, Cole makes a good point. Um, they only beam to me when the boys either kick a goal or, or, or do something. Oh, I think um, you're missing worth... a marketing opportunity. I said this last week to the boys. I think like you I, I tell you what he'll have Howie on Games no, T-shirt no, or what he'll have on oh. there is because the secret behind the Dacos is they sleep in temper beddings. So right. Well, that, oh. Dates will have a big did. temper and Peter and <laughs> yeah. Colleen sleep that's in a temper. Oh. Sorry, that's what I've told. Jace just texts me uh, on, the, on the way the footy. I've got to get back to him. So, yeah. <laughs> we, so just, we just did it now, Dakes. Yeah, we're pretty happy. So, how do you go watch No, but... but. Um, if, if they were to beam to me when Collingwood kicked a goal, I'm just as excited because, you know, uh, again, it's it's a collective thing for us. You know, I want the boys to play finals. You know, I want them to experience finals. And they got that opportunity last year. And, you know, I, you know you'd know, you like to think we're... And I do think we're, we're in a better position this year, I've got no doubt. I mean, we've had hiccups, but, you know, it's a tough competition. They've had a, a pretty hard run all year. I mean... You know, what have we lost four games for the year? I know. Okay, it hasn't come at a good time, but, you know, I, I think you're going to find that uh, the wheels are going to start getting a bit of traction again and they're going to take off again. So, you know, they've got a few guys down and that's what happens. Um, they're out of your control sometimes, reform, injuries. Um, but I think they've, they've, they've got a squad that uh, can, can clearly cover. And, yeah, they've been down the last couple of weeks, so I'm interested now... You know, you don't need a lot of incentive to come out here in front of 80,000 and, and, and start playing a game of football. I think McRae will sit back and just open the open the uh, the, the rooms and, and out they'll come. Pete, we've loved you as a footballer, but I think uh, as fathers in the room listening to the way that you and Colleen have brought your young men up and leaving stuff on the table and getting the selfies, it's um it's a great lesson for us all. So it's great to see you. Good luck Thank to you, you. your what family, your boys. Hopefully the young bloke's back soon. And it's I think, Damo, it's fair to say it's a thrill for us all to have you in the box. Still is. Absolutely. Thank always you, has boys. been. No, good it's always back. good. Love listening to you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Peter Dacos joining us in the box.